Today we are talking about trauma bonding because it's a question that has been in my DM, in my inbox, and it's a question, it's an issue that people don't really understand, are not able to pinpoint um, what trauma bonding is. So trauma bonding is an emotional connection um, where there is a cycle of abuse with positive reinforcements, where someone is addicted to their abuser. Yeah, by abuse we don't. We're not talking about the kawaida or the, the um, you know the normal uh, issues in a relationship. We are talking about abuse. We are talking about verbal abuse, insults. We are talking about financial abuse where they abuse you money or they abuse you, they abuse you financially. We are talking about domestic abuse or even sexual abuse in your relationship in your marriage, whatever form of abuse. So it's a relationship that is characterized by cycles of abuse with positive reinforcement. What that means is the abuser actually does good things to this person, yeah? Um, on occasion. Occasionally, we'll treat them nicely. Occasionally, we'll tell you you're the love of their life. Occasionally, we'll buy you a gift. Occasionally, we'll make you feel like you are someone important. But in there, he goes back to abuse. He goes back to what he was doing. So it's cycles of abuse with positive reinforcement. So someone is addicted to their abuser. It's, for example, an example of um, a trauma bond relationship is the Stockholm syndrome, where um, someone becomes idolizes or becomes addicted to their kidnapper. Or, you know, you, you guys understand the Stockholm syndrome. So the reason um, people stay in trauma bonds is because of the positive reinforcement. Yeah. Or if the person who's your abuser is a person you're depending on for support and emotional connection. They are the, the person who's, that's the person who's supposed to give you that. But in return, that is the person who's also calling you names, who's also uh, beating you, who's also manhandling you, who's also messing with your money, who's also abusing you sexually. Then you, you, you feel like it's your fault. Then you feel like, but I'm getting this. I'm getting this from this person. He is abusing me. He's making me cry sometimes, but he also does this. Yeah. Or for example, a child who depends on their caregiver for the love connection and emotional support yeah but the caregiver is abusive to some extent so the child thinks but they're giving me food yeah but they're providing a shelter for me so i must be the problem they are a good person i must be the fault it's, it's because maybe i'm not good in school it's because i'm not as pretty as my sister because i'm not as tall so and the funny thing is the person being abused the victim some of them depend on the abuser for comfort after harm, even if the abuser is the one who caused the harm. Like the abuser is the one who caused the pain and the tears and, you know, but the victim still goes to the abuser for a solution to be comforted. So what are some of the signs that you are in a trauma bond relationship? What does it mean to be in a trauma bond relationship? The signs, the first sign is the cycles of abuse. Whereby it's there's la a bit of love bombing. Usually trauma bond relationships start with love bombing. If you don't understand what love bombing is, please go to my... There's a video I did and I spoke about love bombing. Please go and watch that video. So number one, the first sign of trauma bonds is there's a cycle of abuse where there's a time where he becomes so abusive. He's calling you names. You're walking on eggshells. You're crying. He's beating you. He's manhandling you. And then after that, he starts, um, he becomes remorseful. Um, he says, you know, I really love you. I do things because I really love you. That's why I behave like that. Uh, here, I bought you a gift. Cycles of abuse with positive reinforcement. That's why people stay. It's not abuse every day. There, there's a week where it's just abuse, beatings, insults. Then there's another week where it's honeymoon. So that's why the victim stays. Another sign of abuse is um, the victim defending the abuser. You know, um, he has so much pressure at work. You know, I, I am the problem. He was angry because there's something I said. I, it was my fault. Or, um, you know, he's going through a lot. You know, he's the love of my life. When the victim defends the abuser so much, the third sign is a power imbalance. Whereby... 
this person knows this is not right they knows that they are crying so much they know this person is hurting them but they don't feel they don't think they can be able to live there's a power imbalance where the abuser has so much control over you you feel like you're addicted to that person you feel like you're addicted to that treatment you're not able to leave that situation the other thing is you feel so unhappy you are so unhappy but you do not know how to end things you don't know how to like you can't find it in you to end the relationship with that person you know it's making you so unhappy it's messing with you you are no longer the same you have lost yourself you don't remember who you were before but you don't know how to end the relationship with this person the other thing is you want to protect your abuser by keeping their behavior a secret you don't want anybody to know what he's doing to you at night you don't want anybody to know that you know all your money he takes all your money and lies to you that whatever whatever you don't want anybody to know so you're trying to protect them that's also a sign of trauma bonding another sign is isolation from support groups like you have isolated yourself or the abuser has isolated you from support groups yeah and when people try to offer support you barricade like you put a barrier when people try to offer support they actually become the problem when people try to tell you you know you need to leave that man one day he will kill you he's beating you too much you think they are the problem you want to start blocking them you want to start going no contact on on them that is also a sign you're in a trauma bond relationship. You can't take the help. And then, instead of looking at the situation for what it is, you think the helper is the problem. And finally, another sign is you're unwilling to take the steps required to end that relationship. You are un you're not even lifting a finger. You just want to sit there and cry. Oh, Mothoni. Oh, my sister. Oh, this is this is what this he's doing to me. This is what is happening. What do I do? But you don't. You want a solution, but you don't actually don't want a solution, right? So before we talk before we talk about how to break a trauma bond the people that are susceptible the people that it's easy for you to find yourself in such a situation are people who faced abuse in childhood like you have faced the same thing like maybe if you had an unpredictable parent uh, or you had a parent who was very verbally abusive yeah if you're in some of in some of those childhoods whether you did your dad or your mother could call you any name they want they could insult you whatever they wanted and you had you you couldn't say anything you were just you could just sit there and hurt crying you know Be, children who have been through cycles of abuse in their childhood it's very easy for you to find yourself in that situation because you you know the cycles because that is your you know because you know how to navigate around the abuse you know when the abuser starts calling you names you either go quiet, you either give them what they want, you either, you know what to do. Um, there are four nervous system, nervous system responses, that, that's what I call them. Four of them, they are flight, fight, freeze, and phone. When you're faced with a situation, when he starts insulting, or the insults start, or when you're faced with danger, what is the first thing you do? What's the first response your body does? It's the four of them. It's one of the four of them. It's either you freeze, like you go numb, you're not able to respond. It's either you uh, flight. Flight is you run away, like you take off, like, please, you just can't handle the conflict. The third one is you fight, like you're ready to attack. Let's do this. And the last one is phone. F-A-W-N. Phone is people pleasing. Where um, you'd rather give up. You'd rather just betray all you have known and join this person than be against them so you please your way in that relationship you know you what he's doing is wrong you know you don't want him coming to your house drunk you know you don't want to uh, give him your account number or your mpesa pin number because he will withdraw money but you'd rather give him than face the abuse right so you just people please your way that is what we call the phone so what is the first thing what is the first way that your body responds to danger or to when he starts insulting you when he starts beating you when he starts um emotional abuse emotional abuse is the ghosting like it's an out of nowhere or just a small argument or just out of nowhere because he has pressure at work or whatever he just goes quiet on you for a whole week and all that how does your body respond 
It's also important to know that. So people who are prone to trauma bonds are people who have been through cycles of abuse in their childhood because they know how to navigate around that. Because they know when my dad was calling me names, I would keep quiet or I would be invisible in that house. Or if my dad was calling me names, I would do anything to please him. I would maybe clean the car or I would make his favorite food. That is fun. What we've spoken about, F-A-W-N, the people pleasing, you had to please him. You had to really please your way. Or those ones for flight, you had to really stay away from him. Like if he's in the living room, you pass the back door to the bedrooms. So if you went through abuse in your childhood, cycles of abuse, it's very easy for you to be in such a relationship because you know how to navigate around it. I did not say it's comfortable. I did not say it does. It still hurts. But that is what you know how to navigate around. When you go into healthy relationships, you don't understand. There is no that. You know, um, um, abusive relationships come with a lot of depressions, a lot of anxieties. Um, and then sometimes, sometimes people confuse anxiety with butterflies. Mm? So, like, it's not giving you the adrenal. You know how those um, abusive relationships they give you that ad adrenaline rush. One day he's calling you names, it's crazy. The next day he's taking you to Dubai, buying you a car doing. You're always, you know, there's always the adrenaline. So in some of these healthy relationships, because we don't have those highs, very high highs and very low lows, you don't know how to navigate that. Your body is used so much to being in alert mood. You don't know how to deal with calm and peace. And actually, when you do the work is when you realize love is peace. I keep saying this. Love is peace. Love is calm. Love lets you be. Love supports you the way you are. Love doesn't try to change you by beating you. Doesn't try to mold you into what they want. Ah, yeah. So breaking a trauma bond. How do you break a trauma bond? Number one, you focus on the present. Um, the reason the victims stay in this abuse for too long is because they focus so much on the last time he bought me a car, the last time he took me on dinner. So he does nice things sometimes. Okay, let's talk about today. Let's talk about what happens more often. What happens more often is the abuse. You're crying more than you're happy. You're feeling bad about yourself more than you're happy. That is the first thing. Number two is losing yourself in the relationship. This is so important. I was in a narcissistic, narcissistic relationship. Um, I don't know if it, 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 it it's kind of, I, I look at it like kind of a trauma bond. Yeah, kind of. So, and I remember one of the things I, 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 I that was paining me and one of the first things, those who've gotten a copy of my book, can tell the first thing i told my therapist was i lost myself there's something i lost this is not me and she told me yes muthoni you lost yourself yeah so losing yourself not you can't recognize you don't know who this woman is you don't like her she's confused she's like you don't know who this woman is yeah another thing is please teach yourself about abusive and toxic relationships information is power teach yourself when you hear a, a workshop about it attend it when you see my mother is by the mother does these relationships come to my youtube channel educate yourself information is power another thing is positive self-talk a lot of these toxic relationships and these trauma bonds they pray and they eat they feed on your self-esteem they strip you of all your self-esteem and you start feeling so bad about yourself you don't feel beautiful anymore because they've told you you're not as beautiful they've made you feel you're not as beautiful they've told you they don't like chubby cheeks so you're here trying to look for any means possible to you know uh, to lose weight they've really made you feel oh you're so stupid you're so useless you're not as beautiful anymore you're not you know you're not my type anymore so they strip you off of your self-esteem so it's also important for you to focus on positive self-talk uh let's start by looking at what are your best qualities what are some of the things that you like about you let's start from there so that is another thing positive self-talk the another thing that i really especially when my clients come to me and tell me Madoni, i'm going through a breakup it's spending me so much another thing i tell them is practice self-care have some time for yourself even do and self-care is not about money sometimes i tell people you need to do some self-care oh, do a home facial 
at home dress up in the house put on some makeup look like even today i'm just shooting my videos and then this is how i look the rest of the day yeah so self-care up your self-care game when you're making food make your favorite meals serve it nicely like you're serving to someone important watch your favorite movie play your favorite song over and over in the ra on the radio or in the tv and feel good um when you're serving food serve yourself nicely when you're in the house wear beautiful matching outfits don't just wear weird things and when you wake up the first thing please make your bed let's the it's the little things go for a movie with a friend a big screen movie go for a walk at karura forest or a, a park near you where you do your walks join the gym start yoga join a yoga class a dancing class start taking care of yourself your body watch what you eat start taking a lot of water in your food make sure they are vegetables up your self-care game start to feel good about yourself such that when their abuse when he continues the abuse will be like wow this guy is making me feel bad like i feel good on my own but when he, he comes i start feeling bad about myself so he must be the problem another thing is to learn what healthy relationships look like what do healthy relationships look like if you're coming from a cycle of abusive um, um childhood where there was a lot of you might not know what it is and that is why i i teach women how to heal their inner child how to deal with that childhood trauma actually right now we have an, a boot camp that's starting today so you can hop on and go on even if you're not able to hop on you can take i have the healing the childhood trauma uh, package it's something that you can also take so we ca i can teach you what a healthy relationship looks like another thing is come up with a safety plan to leave that relationship come up with a safety plan i didn't tell you wake up and leave yeah a safety plan can look like coming putting your finances together it can even take you a year a few months can't put your finances together another thing could be looking for a, sub a safe space to go after you leave especially if you have kids um you know and you really have to also you, it's not just about you and you don't want also you to mess you keep with your kids mental health and you, you're going there to sleep on the streets begging somewhere to sleep so come up with a plan talk to a relative look for a safe safe space even for domestic victims where maybe you can go um, and see if they can take you with your kids for a few weeks or a few months before you stabilize um get a new job start a side hustle start a therapy come up with a safe plan to leave before you actually leave and then eventually you leave that is how you break a trauma bond it's actually not easy to leave an abusive person and people who've not been in abusive relationships before even in their childhood do not understand trauma bonds do not understand how can he be beating you and you're staying there they stay there because of their positive reinforcements and if you went through abuse or you had an abusive um childhood then you you already your body knows how to be in alert mode your body knows how to navigate around the abuse it doesn't mean it's not hurting it doesn't mean you're not unhappy so but you do not know what it feels like so break the cycle yeah it's your job to make yourself happy it's your job to give yourself a good relationship and sometimes some of the things that we go through as adults start in our childhood yeah so i wish you all the best um i hope i've not left anything out if this is you you can always reach out to me for support you can go for therapy yes you can go for therapy you can go for a coach who helps um uh with things like this you can go for someone who you connect with you can also come to me for coaching so yeah bye